again? Yeah, Are you ready? yeah we're going to start. Good morning, ladies. We're going to, uh, this microphone, I feel like I don't need it, but I guess we need it because we're actually live streaming. So let me tell you right now that I don't think you're on camera, but don't pick your nose or, you know, do any of those things just in case. I'm just telling you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, welcome, welcome to WOW Women Offering Worship. I think this is the beginning of our 25th year. Now, I said that two years ago, and I think Jane said, no, no, that's wrong. And I think I said it last year, and I think Mary said, no, I don't think you're right. And I think, doggone it, I should be right this year, and I don't know if I am or not, but we're going to claim that this is the beginning of our 25th year. Don't you think? Don't you? Yay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, today we're going to celebrate the beginning of our 25th year. Um, it is wonderful to be back together. Um, we've been talking about space and what it all means, but what a joy to see your beautiful faces and the week that this has been and to culminate in being here with you. One of my favorite places to be in the whole wide world is just, you know, with all of you, is just wonderful. So anyway, um, I'm just glad we're all, we're glad you're here. I would like to start um, with a quote. Uh, some of you know that I, I like Maria Shriver's writing. She does Sunday morning, and I think I've shared that in the past. But um, I was reading her Sunday morning um, online paper and her article, and there was something in there that um, I just thought kind of captured what I was feeling about WOW this year. So with one change, um, I'd like to read this to you. She says, I want you to know that I believe this newsletter, and I would say this worship service, to be a holy and special place, a place of reverence, a place of hope. It's a place to get informed and inspired, but more importantly, it's a place where we come to share our stories of joy, grief, pain, and transformation with the hope that the words that we share may help others heal and make the world a better place. So I offer you that for us this morning and this year. Um, I would like to read to you a psalm, Psalm 95, just the very beginning from Psalms now. It says, let us begin this day with singing, whether we feel like it or not. Let us make glad sounds and let our tongues articulate words of thanksgiving and praise. And so I'm going to ask you to stand at this point and join me in the call to worship that's on your bulletin, and then we're going to sing. The prophet Zephaniah says, The Lord your God is in your midst. He is mighty and will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt over you with singing. Let it be known in all nations, God is our strength, God is our song, and God is our salvation. So let us praise God and rejoice with God in song. And if you open up the black book that you have, Great is the Lord is 2022. No, said your part. We skipped this as the day of Yep. Oh, well, let's go back. See, I'm so sorry. Go to your red books, lady. <laughs> I'm here to keep her on. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. We're going to do one, three, and four, please. This is a day of new beginnings, time to remember and move on, time to believe what love is bringing, laying to rest the pain that's gone. And let us with the Spirit's daring step from the past and leave
that just seems so appropriate for today. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the call to worship, but this time you all are going to be the leader, and uh, Mary and I are going to be the people, so we get to say it differently. So go ahead. It says, The Lord your God is in your midst. He is mighty and will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt over you with singing. Let it be known in all nations, God is our strength, God is our song, and God is our salvation. So let us praise God and rejoice with God in song. Now your black one. Thank you. I'm singing a new song about life. Isn't it good to have good friends? <laughs> they tell you where you are and what you're doing. Um, our theme today is singing a new song, which seems appropriate in so many ways in our lives, in our church, certainly, and in the world. And so I want to talk a little bit about life in church. Um, I think probably because I feel like I'm just really knee deep in singing a new song about these things. So some of you know that. Uh, my daughter and her husband and their little one and a half year old girl have been living with us for the last year which um, after a few kind of bumps in the road at the beginning as we were kind of getting used to one another um, has been this incredible joy for me it's just words can't describe it um, she's now at the stage where she uh, when she would wake up in the morning instead of crying for her bottle she would babble you know, and I could hear that from our bedroom, and it would just fill me with this sense of joy. It's like, oh my gosh, how wonderful. And then when she would see me, it would just be like this, you know, like she doesn't say gammy, she doesn't say any words, but she would just look at me with her arms stretched up like, come on, pick me up, you know, let's get going here. We've got this great day. And so, um, so we've had this year where they are, are just a part of our lives, and then, of course, they bought a house, <laughs> and they moved. Um, and that was about a week ago, and so I am still making those adjustments. They, I cannot complain. They are in Shorewood. I mean, they did not move very far. 
and they have invited us over to be a part of what's going on there, and I'm so grateful. But every time I see my little granddaughter, she looks like she's grown, you know, two more inches, and she's doing more things that I didn't get to see and be a part of. And so I'm like, okay, this is a new song. This new song means our house is really quiet. This new song means, you know, there's an emptiness that wasn't there before. And so I'm trying to determine what else this new song means for me, because I think there uh, will be room for something else that will bring me joy in my life and that will make me smile. But I haven't found it yet, so I'm working on it. But, you know, we go through these stages. And for me, singing a new song in my life is something I'm still looking forward to. So I'll keep you posted on that. Um, I was going to sing Sunrise, Sunset, but I'm going to just skip that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she can play it. yeah. But that was the song that came to mind as we were talking about singing a new song. It's like, yeah, they're just growing up so fast, and then they go away, and, you know, one season following another, laden with happiness and tears, and that is right where I am. So thanks for letting me share that. Um, let's sing, oh, let me do the James scripture for you. James 5.13 says, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. And I would add to that that we sing songs of praise even when we're not happy because we are faith-filled people who believe that God is good no matter what. So um, let's sing My Life is in You, Lord. It's your black book again, 2022. church. Um, I don't think there's anybody in this group today that doesn't have some clue as to what's been going on in the life of the church in the last <laughs> number of months. Um, if you don't know, Pastor Matt um, took a, a sabbatical back in June. In July, Pastor uh, Don Francis and his wife came here um, temporarily, what's the inter in interim. interim, interim pastor. Um, he was told that he would have three months. We all went, hmm, what do we do with that? But he's very faithful um, to his calling. And we found out just this week that he and JR are able to stay through June. And so um, I don't know about the rest of the congregation, but certainly the staff is just thrilled to pieces to have them both here. And I guess as I was thinking about them, um, I wrote down a couple of thoughts. And one is that um, I have known them, as maybe some of you have as well, when they were first members here, he was teaching. Um, and 
Lakeland College. Thank you, Mary. You should just step up here and, and talk through this with me. Um, we are that close that I wouldn't even mind. We can do this. And, uh, and they were members. You know, they were members of the church. And they had two kids, and the kids were doing all the things that the kids in the church did. And I just remember thinking I really liked them both, and that was about the extent of it. Um, but to have them here in the place of senior pastor and wife, it makes such a huge difference to me. And I think to this church, honestly, um, the man comes with a deep, deep faith and a quiet resonance, and he cares and listens. I, I can't even tell you all the different ways um, that he's changed us, me, maybe I can only speak for me, but I think I see a lot of heads nodding. He has a vision for this church that is just amazing, and he talks about this being God's church, not his church, and not our church even, but God's church. And he prays about God, what God will do with God's church here. And so we've been energized by the presence of someone who is so in love with God that he isn't afraid to show it. And so I am just, I give thanks for this particular change in our lives, and I'm grateful. Isaiah 42.10 says, Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the end of the earth. And the new song I think that we're going to sing, because I don't think I know it, is in your black book, 2045. So Sue is really going to belt it out for us. Actually, if Sue's going to try to play this new song and sing the new song, one of those is going to get shortchanged. Well, do you want to just sing it first? Or play well, it first? Sure, let me introduce you to it. Sing a new song to the Lord, he to whom wonders belong. Rejoice in his triumph and tell of his power. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. We can do this. Ready? Here we go. Sing a new song to the Lord, he to whom wonders belong. Rejoice in his triumph and tell of his power. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the ends of the earth. See Salvation is shown, and still he remembers his mercy and truth. Oh, changing in heart to his own. Sing a new song and rejoice, publish his praises abroad. Let job, ladies, and I hope those words were meaningful to you. They were so indicative of what we are talking about this morning. Thanks, Sue. Mm -hmm. All right. Where's our... Where's How can I help you? making sure yep. I know what I'm doing. There you go. She wrote things down. I'm winging it. All right. I'm good. I think I have it turned up high enough that we're probably blowing people out of the sanctuary and live stream. They're going, too loud, too loud. I don't have my phone on me, so if any of you are texting me, sorry. <laughs> um, sing a new song to the world. To the world. Psalm 96 
says, God is here, God is now. It is time for celebration. Our praises need not be confined to old songs, nor need we, need, need we have great organs or massive choirs to honor his name. Let us create new songs of praise to our God. Let us discover new ways of proclaiming his greatness and his glory. Whenever one turns, God's power is manifested. God's presence is made apparent. Let us celebrate his presence in our world today. So our world. So things are changing in our life. Things are changing in our church and in our faith. And things are changing in the world. It's hard to keep up with how many things are changing in our world. And we stand here, one person, how can I make a difference? What could I possibly do to help change the world? I feel inept. I feel helpless. What can I do? At the end of this month, our church is sponsoring a mobile pack event for Feed My Starving Children. It's up in Grafton. It's three days, two hour shifts. It is so much fun. They rock music and you chicken, rice, veggie, soy. <laughs> it's a camaraderie. But how does that change the world? And this project reminds me of the starfish story, and you probably all know the starfish story, but the starfish story of a man walking along the beach and bending down to pick up a starfish that has washed up on the beach, which will mean certain death for the starfish if he is not returned to the water. And so the man bends down and picks up the starfish and tosses him back out to the sea. And he's been doing this on his walk. And he comes across another person who says, what are you doing? And he said, well, I'm picking them up and throwing them back. And he said, there are so many. What possible good could you possibly do? And the man bent down and picked up another starfish and threw him into the water and said, well, I made a difference for that one. Feed My Starving Children reminds me of that story because think of how many millions of children are hungry in the world. And yet, feed my starving children, chicken, rice, veggie, soy, makes a difference for that child to help him or her thrive and be all that they might be. So, if you are interested in helping with Feed My Starving Children, there's lots of sign-up information out in the narthex. September 29th, 30th, and October 1st. Andrea Hatcher is coming into town for Feed My Starving Children, and she and I are going to pack at 3.30 Friday, so if anybody wants to join us, we don't have a specific wow time, but Andrea and Nell and I will be there at 3.30 on Friday. All right, and so now for the world, we're going to sing Great is Thy Faithfulness, number 140 in the red.
Um, as we come into our prayer time, uh, we've done it in lots of different ways, but my favorite way to do prayers in WOW is to simply lift them up so that we know who's lifting them up and, and we can pray at that moment in time. So what we'd like to do is um, we're going to do a little refrain from the black book. I, sorry for the books back and forth, but that's the way the service kind of lended itself. And so we're going to sing the refrain of we are standing on holy ground, which is in your black book. And then I'm going to ask for you to lift up whatever prayer requests are in your heart. We'll sing the refrain again. I've got a short little prayer, and then we'll sing the refrain and do the Lord's Prayer. So let's go into this time of prayer by singing, We Are Standing on Holy Ground. can we pray for each other this morning, ladies? Jane? Prayers for all of them. Repeat that. Thank you. Oh, um, in case you didn't hear, uh, Jane is offering prayers for the Kern family, Debbie Kern and the kids on the death of her husband, Steve, and that service is here on Saturday. And then also for Sue Doherty, who's caring for her father, who is quite ill. How else can we pray for you? Judy. special. Judy's granddaughter getting married this weekend. Um, blessings for them and for her good friend Carol who's nearing the end of her life and for her family who's taken care of her for, so tenderly for the last three years. Yes, Loretto. Okay, I'll, I'll take your word for it, but yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Grateful, grateful, grateful for, um, I never think about WOW without thinking about Deb Mum Hill and Shirley Andrew Scherer, who were the two women who had the um, vision. foresight, vision to, uh, to start the service. So thank and you. they might be watching. Who knows? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. George is grateful that, um, that we have an, a second opportunity to worship and to worship, I think, as women, which is a little bit maybe different than worshiping on Sunday morning. So very grateful for that. Anything else? Yeah, Deb.
Hallelujah for all of those things. I mean, even the, the tough ones, you know, that we struggle with, that are hard. Um, just the knowledge that God is good all the time. You know, time. even God is good. Even in those really tough situations, like you just mentioned, that you want prayers for. Peter, right? It's Peter? Yeah. CJ. We'll be praying. My heart is both grateful and heavy when I um, I enjoy my Tuesdays afternoon, Tuesdays at 2 with Sue at Mom's Place where we do a Bible study and a lot of hymn singing. And to hear them sing is just delightful. Um, but it's heavy because every time I go, somebody else has taken a chunk down. Mm. And it's, hard. it's just, uh, they're dear to my heart now because I know them so well. Yeah. So they're delightful. I'm grateful for that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Let's sing our re- Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Linda. Mm, friends Linda and Tom in, uh, at a funeral for Tom's 99-year-old mother. What a celebration. We are so excited to see Laura here with us. Um, as she regains her strength and her health, we are with you, hon. <laughs> Let's sing our refrain again. Dear God, as we head into this fall, may we remain hopeful about the path ahead and the new beginnings that you have in store for us, whether in our lives, your church, or your world. May we resist the urge to rush and instead pause, think about what matters most, and remember that we have everything we need within us to sing a new song. Let's just go ahead and do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our offering, our gifts and our offerings, are on the pedestal in the back as you leave, or as you entered. We have chosen to make a difference in the world by donating our September funds to feed my starving children. And after that, there is an exciting new ministry that we will talk about in October. But for September, we wanted to support Feed My Starving Children. So if you want to leave your gifts as you leave or whenever. Um, And like that starfish, Feed My Starving Children will make a difference to at least that one. Um, So that's what we invite you to do. And now our benediction. Would you please stand for this, please? And join us in saying, So So we we began began this day with singing, singing, whether whether we we felt felt like it or not. not. May May we we end end this day with praises, praises, because we know and may even feel that we shall forever be the objects of God's concern and the children of his love. We invite you to join us 
for light brunch and class introduction in the Walnut Room this time. Um, I brought the Lucky Charms, so, you know, I brought my, you know, hey, that's brunch for some people. So, um, I'll meet you, we will meet you in the Wesley Room, I'm um, sorry, the Walnut Room, and live streamers, if you want to come, we've got Lucky Charms, we won't pour the milk on it right away. So, all right. Nice job, Nell. I'll come to brunch. <laughs> <laughs> 